Thank you for joining us for our Bridge Family Worship. Our staff and elders hope you're finding help and encouragement during this trying time. And we hope you let us know of ways we can come alongside of you, even if it's a simple phone call to help you through the day. Please call our church office or visit our website. You'll find a way to both give and receive help. This morning, I'm beginning a new series entitled Chicken Soup for the Soul. Many of you may remember this series of books published some years ago. They were compilations of stories that ranged from the comical to the miraculous. Stories intentionally gathered into book form to encourage. These books and stories came to my mind as I was thinking about how much sickness or fear of becoming sick has gripped our country. Many of us might share the memory of our mothers bringing a steaming bowl of chicken noodle soup to our bed to help us recover from a bad cold. Do you remember? Now, there are studies to show that mom was right about chicken soup's ability to help recover from the cold. BIDMC clinical dietitian Sandy Allen on RD says, studies have shown that a hearty bowl of chicken noodle soup may help clear up nasal congestion and ease cold system, sy symptoms. It's all about the ingredients, she said. So I began thinking that what our church family might need is some chicken soup for the soul, some heartwarming stories to cheer, encourage, and inspire. So each Sunday for the next few weeks, I'll be sharing some of my favorite chicken soup stories. Let me begin with this one entitled, A Coincidence? This story by Ed Coper begins with the words of Jesus from Luke chapter 6. If you have your Bible handy, turn there and keep your Bible close by. We'll be looking at some other scriptures a little later. Luke 6.38 Give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, they will pour into your lap. For whatever measure you deal out to others, it will be dealt to you in return. I was very proud of my daughter, Emily. At only nine years old, she had been carefully saving her allowance money all year and trying to earn extra money by doing small jobs around the neighborhood. Emily was determined to save enough money to buy a girl's mountain bike, an item for which she'd been longing and she'd been faithfully putting her money away since the beginning of the year. How are you doing, honey, I asked soon after Thanksgiving. I knew she had hoped to have all the money she needed by the end of the year. I have $49, Daddy, she said. I'm not sure I'm going to make it. But you've worked so hard, I said to encourage her. Keep it up. But you know that you can have your pick from my bicycle collection. Thanks, Daddy, but your bikes are so old. I smiled to myself because I knew she was right. As a collector of vintage bicycles, all my girls' bikes were 1950s models, not the kind a kid would choose today. When the Christmas season arrived, Emily and I went comparison shopping and she saw several less expensive bikes for which she thought 
she'd have to settle. As we left one store, she noticed the Salvation Army volunteer ringing his bell by a big kettle. Can we give them something, Daddy? She asked. Sorry, Em, I'm out of change, I replied. Emily continued to work hard all through December, and it seemed she might make her goal after all. Then suddenly, one day, she came downstairs to the kitchen and made an announcement to her mother. Mom, she said hesitantly, you know all the money I've been saving? Yes, yes, dear, smiled my wife, Diane. God told me to give it to the poor people. Diane knelt down to Emily's level. That's a very kind thought, sweetheart, but you've been saving all year. Maybe, maybe you could give some of it. Emily shook her head vigorously. God said all. When we saw that she was serious, we gave her very various suggestions about where she could contribute. But Emily had received specific instructions, and so one cold Sunday morning before Christmas, with little fanfare, she handed her total savings of $58 to a surprised and grateful Salvation Army volunteer. Moved by Emily's selflessness, I suddenly noticed that a local car dealer was collecting used bicycles to refurbish and give to poor children for Christmas. And I realized that if my nine-year-old daughter could give away all her money, I, I could certainly give up one bike from my collection. As I picked up a shiny but old-fashioned kid's bike from the line in the garage. It seemed as if a second bicycle in the line took on a glow. Should I give a second bike? No, no. Certainly the one would be enough. But as I got into my car, I couldn't shake the feeling that I should donate that second bike as well. And if Emily could follow heavenly instructions, I decided I could too. I turned back and loaded the second bike into the trunk, then took off for the dealership. When I delivered the bikes, the car dealer thanked me and said, you're making two kids very happy, Mr. Coper, and here are your tickets. Tickets, I asked. Yes, for each bike donated, we're giving away one chance to win a brand new men's 21-speed mountain bike from a local bike shop. So here are your tickets for two chances. Why wasn't I surprised when that second ticket won the bike? I can't believe you won, laughed Diane, delighted. I didn't, I said. It's pretty clear that Emily did. And why wasn't I surprised when the bike dealer happily substituted a gorgeous new girl's mountain bike for the man's bike advertised? Coincidence? Maybe. But I'd like to think it was God's way of rewarding a little girl for a sacrifice beyond her years while giving her dad a lesson in charity and the power of the Lord. Isn't that a great story? And of course, it wasn't just a coincidence. Jesus promised that when we give to others, it will be returned to us by our Heavenly Father. But what's really interesting in Jesus' comments is that he indicates that God will give back to us in the same way we give to others. The Bible is full of references to this principle. From Proverbs chapter 11, a generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others 
will be refreshed. From Proverbs 22, verse 9, the generous will themselves be blessed, for they share their food with the poor. In Luke 6, Jesus was referring to a common everyday occurrence that everyone in the crowd understood. He referred to a a buyer of grain in a marketplace. Now, the stingy shopkeeper would take the measuring cup, dip into the bin of grain, carefully level it off, and pour it into the customer's pouch. But a generous merchant would dip into the measuring cup, uh, the measuring cup into the grain bin, shake it, to settle the contents tighter, then press down to compact the grain even more. Finally, he would top off the cup with another pour until the grain heaped and spilled over the edge. Only then would he transfer the grain into the shopper's bag. Jesus' listeners immediately understood the difference between a stingy and a generous merchant. And his point was this. If you give generously to others in need, God will generously generously return his favor to you. But if you're stingy in your giving to others, well, God just might give back to you in the same way. It was Jesus who said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. The Apostle Paul suggested that there's something eternal about being generous to others. He wrote this in 1 Timothy chapter 6. Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant or to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. In the same way, they will lay up treasure for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age, so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. Let me add quickly right here that I'm not talking this morning about your offerings to the church. Your giving to Bridge has always been and continues to be most generous. So thank you for your continued sacrifice in your giving. Know today's chicken soup story is all about how we share with others. It's about looking around us at how God has blessed us, and then determining how we can generously bless others. God takes note when you offer to others that cup pressed down, shaken, and filled to overflowing. He promises to return to you in like fashion the way you bless others. But Jesus made this point about our generosity or lack of it. He said, for whatever measure you deal out to others, it will be dealt to you in return. He's very clear on this point, however challenging it might be for you to consider. Is it possible that in your concern to make sure you have all you need, that you're missing real, even overflowing blessings from God. According to Jesus, his Father takes note of our stinginess and measures it back to us. I believe Jesus wasn't just talking about God's generosity to us while we're alive. I believe he's also referring to laying up treasures for ourselves in heaven. Real life our eternal life in heaven is going to, in some way, be better blessed as a result of our generosity in this life. 
The church is here to help you in your generosity. I want to take a minute to thank Stacy Burkholder, our outreach pastor, and his outreach team for the many ways they have been funneling your generosity into the community and the church. They've taken up collection and help for foster care parents, for Western State Hospital nurses and staff. They've uh, collected food from our church family for food bags for needy school children. We've collected letters written to Shenandoah Nursing Home, patients and staff. People from our church have made masks for Augusta Hospital worker, workers. Thank you all for working through our outreach team to bless so many. Now our next project is asking you to adopt one of our bridge medical workers to bless them through cards, letters, care package, any creative way you can think of to bless these important and hard workers. We'll be sharing more information about that project in the days ahead. Remember, you can also give of your time. Just call or visit our website to find out how. Jesus said this to his disciples about their ongoing ministries. Freely you have received. Freely give. Each week our church family gathers to share in a communion service the Lord's Supper. This morning as we gather for that meal, spread out as we are, I want you to consider how generously God has blessed you through his son, Jesus. Listen again to the Apostle Paul from Titus chapter 3. When the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we may become heirs, having the hope of eternal life. I really, really love that passage. But I'd like to read it to you again this time from the Living Bible translation. But when the time came for the kindness and love of God our Savior to appear, then he saved us. Not because we were good enough to be saved, but because of his kindness and pity. By washing away our sins and giving us the new joy of the indwelling Holy Spirit, whom he poured out upon us, with wonderful fullness, and all because of what Jesus Christ, our Savior, did, so that he could declare us good in God's eyes, all because of his great kindness. Now we can share in the wealth of the eternal life he gives us, and we're eagerly looking forward to receiving it. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for the generosity that you poured out upon us by giving us your son, Jesus, who died on a cross and bled there, and his body was broken there so that we could have eternal life by putting our faith in him. And today, as we share together in the cup and the loaf, the blood and the body of Christ, we want to thank you again for your eternal kindness to us and the promise that this meal makes to us who believe that one day we will eat it again with each other and with you face to face at the wedding supper of the Lamb. Would you, Lord, bless us all as we are scattered believers today yet unified in this simple meal. In Jesus, thank you. Holy Spirit, thank you. Prompt us all 
to be more generous, understanding that we'll receive back from you with the same measure we give to others. In Jesus' name,